Here we go. Good morning. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today we will be planting corn. Hi guys. We're going to be using Ken today on the planter. And um, we're going to try something new. I think Jim might have shared it with you earlier. If not, I'm sharing it with you now. Jim is going to use Ken singly on the corn planter to um, plant the corn. Hon, you got like that strap is tucked underneath his pro latch. Um, so he's got some reasons for doing that. Yeah. One is that Ken is more of a straight walker. <coughs> Another one is that it's just a small piece of corn, patch of corn that he's planting. So get out here and get him hooked up. Here's the corn planter. Okay. Get in, get in, get in, get in. Oh, my. Oh. Let's try that again. Come here. Cast up. Oh. Perfect. Why don't you stay there with him? I forgot a couple things. I'll gladly stay with you, Kenny. So I've, I've shown this quite a few times. When I'm using a single horse, I just have these short straps that go right down from the back pad right through my D-ring. And then I just pick up the shafts and hitch them up. So since I usually do it like this, I do one side at a time, the shafts are pinned in the cart so they can't completely twist around, but because I do one side at a time, it kind of pulls the whole harness over in the process until I get this hitched up. So now I'll just lift this back up to square it up. And then it will sit evenly on his back. Um, people wonder about the weight on his back with these, this cart and this, these heavy shafts that I have. And it, I put my hands underneath the back pad and it's fairly, it's fairly heavy. But when I sit on that seat, I will actually put a lot of weight, take a lot of weight right off that, the shafts in the back pad. So it's actually not bad at all. So now I hitch up my chains for the whole back. And then I hitch up my tug. I've used enough so I know what's length to put it at. It seems very sloppy, but by the time I get the other side hitched up, It'll be fine. And by the time he slides the head where he belongs, that'll come tight and these will actually come out better. As you can see, the whole back strap won't even reach here without some pulling. So um, this whole thing will slide back where it belongs. So I hitched my other snap here, but when I do, the spring in my snap has gone. But not only that, this is worn enough so that there's nothing there to stop that from going right in and out. So because of that, I actually have to take some black tape. I gotta get, get it fixed, but um, for right now, I'm just gonna take some black tape and wrap it, and then it can't fall off. I don't know what we do around here without black tape. Okay, until we get this more permanently fixed, that black tape will work just fine. 
So I'm going to hitch can here for a second before we get hitched on the corn planter. I want to go check on Baron. He's out here in a new pasture. And we'll walk in through the sawmill and give you an idea of what I've been doing lately even in the sawmill. I've had a big order for some fencing. So I got a whole bunch of 4x4s there. Here's some 16 foot 4x4s that really only need to be 8 feet long. My sawdust pile is starting to grow, which is good to have that extra sawdust. That we use for bedding. Yes. Everybody asks us about that. And then here we just have a little whole bunch of odds and ends. I still have some Adirondack siding here and I still need to saw a bunch more of that. But uh, I need some 1 by 6 by 16s for the fence for a particular order. And uh, Looks like we got more edging to do. Yes. Lots of work, lots of work. So let's At check on Baron. Four. So this is his first time out here. He'll be out here for a few hours this morning and then he'll go back in out of the tall grass. But we've just got this portable fence. He just has, has this little strip here from here over to, or you can see just beyond that, that bundle of slabs is another fence there. So he just has this little strip. He can actually go back into the barnyard and get water. Um, he's not locked in here, but this is his first time in this particular spot. So I, it looks like he's getting used to it. I'm curious what's going to happen when I go over just beyond him to plant corn if he'll cause any trouble, which I highly, highly doubt he will. I think he's going to be too happy. Yeah, he's <laughs> pretty happy here. Yeah. Okay, let's go get going. So here's my John Deere corn planter. It's 100 years old. No, it's not that old, but it's, it's, uh, it's an old... Uh, planter, kind of an old junk planter. You know, for the last few years, I've only planted a few acres every year. So I pull this out of the shed, I run it for, you know, two hours and I put it back in the shed. I just, I don't, can't justify having a, a nice corn planter that costs a lot of money for the tiny little bit of, of corn I plant. Um, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but <laughs> um, I can live with what I have here. So this is a two row planter. I don't put any fer commercial fertilizer on. Um, so I don't have to deal with the, with the fertilizer hoppers, which is back here. And there would, be another, would have been another one right here. But as you can see, these are pretty well uh, getting pretty rusty and probably they wouldn't work anyways. So all we have is the two corn hoppers. And uh, so we're all ready to go. I just gotta put some corn into it and we'll hitch on. I'm actually gonna use two different varieties of corn this year. Um, I have, I don't have enough in the one bag, I'm sure. Although, maybe I will. If I don't have enough, in this partial bag, which is last year's corn, then I have another partial bag of a different variety that should work just fine to finish up the field. So what day corn is this? I believe this is probably a, about an 85 or 90 day corn, which should mature, mature fine to make picking corn. So I will pick it, meaning I'll just, I'll just, I'll let it get fully mature and then I'll just pick the ears off the corn. And it won't be a, a silage corn that would, years ago when we milked cows, and a lot of people have asked actually about our silos. It's one of our most asked questions. What's the story be behind the silo tops? Okay, so you, years ago when we were milking cows, we would actually make silage, corn silage. So we would um, grow corn and uh, it, would, uh, it would be chopped into silage and then it would bl be blown up into the pipes, which are kind of falling down. One has a white pipe there partially up and the other one has a pipe at the top partially down, but not completely. So anyways, that's what we would do. We would blow them into these silos. Originally, when we moved to this farm, there was a 70 foot silo to the left of the white one or 60, maybe it, was a six, maybe it was just 60 foot, 60 by 20. That, um, and then there was this 14 by 35 silo, the white one, and that did not have a top on it. And so what we did is the Amish had just moved into our area at the time, and we hired the Amish crew to come in and tear down the 60 by 20 silo 
And then we were able from that silo blocks, we were able to have enough silo blocks to build this 12 by 40 silo. And there was still enough blocks that it went to another Amish farm and they put up another 12 by, I mean, uh, 12 by 40 silo at their place too. So we were able to utilize that old silo and make two new silos. So in, in my silos, so we got them all up, but we didn't have a roof on them. Um, there are, are roofs that you can buy for silos, but I chose to, instead of buying that roof, I hired some Amish to help me and we actually made these roofs on these silos. Now, it looks scary, it looks high, it looks dangerous to do, and it, I guess it was somewhat, but um, we had the silos full of corn when we were doing it, so it was just a matter of, of pulling you know, one board up at a time and making the, the building on top of this pile of corn in the silo. So it wasn't as dangerous as it sounds, although putting the steel on was a little bit dangerous. I remember on the, the 40 footer, um, the Amish couldn't finish that up. So my son Levi came up and helped me and we put the steel on that roof. And I remember the very last sheet, which is up in this upper right hand corner here. Um, I remember, how did we do that? Uh, I'm not sure exactly how, even how we did that to put that last piece of steel on, but I remember I was hanging out there and I was, uh, Levi, my son was holding me by one leg as I screwed those last screws into that, into that roof. I, I had to do that part because there's no way I could have held him. He's a big boy. And, uh, but he was strong enough. He could easily hold me if I had fallen and I trusted him. So that's what we did and it was no big deal and we got it done. But we haven't used those silos for quite a few years now. Um, I've been tempted to, to even do it again sometime, you know, the one silo, but who knows, I may or may not. As I, as I get older, I just have less desire to tackle projects like that. Yeah, because every year he, had, he always climbed up the outside to make sure the pipes were in place and everything. And I always just hated that, seeing him up there. I, I've never been- On the outside. I've never been too afraid of heights, but I actually really enjoyed filming silos because I loved to be able to get up at the very top of the silo, inside of the silo, and, and look at those windows, those openings up top, and just see the whole landscape around. It was, to me, it was quite enjoyable. Now you can stand on the ground and use your drone and see all around. Exactly. <laughs> and we never had a silo unloader, so we were the unloaders, so we all did our fair share of that. <laughs> There's no doubt Brenda did a tremendous amount of silo unloading. Um, forking that stuff up. And I know Levi at a very young age, he was forking out a lot of silage. Yeah, we had some people that worked for us and while they were thinking about working for us and Jim was showing them the silo and <laughs> after he started climbing up there, he's like, no, I don't think there's jobs for me. Well, well, I was up there for about 10 minutes before he finally got to the top of the ladder. And I knew right up, by the time he got up to the top, I, I could tell by his face, I says, you're afraid of heights, aren't you? He <laughs> says, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Not there. G. 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 Oh, huh. bye, 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 oh, it's nice with this corn planter because it's quite easy to roll so I can just pull it up to the cart. I'm a little concerned because I've never used this with this cart, I don't think, and the way this is set up, it's got a bolt that drops through that pin, that hole, and I'm just hoping that it fits. just tying on my handy dandy strap which picks up and lowers 
the planter. That handy dandy strap has seen better days. Careful step. So now what I'm going to do, I'm here, I've dropped the corn planter down to the ground. I don't know if it's settled all the way in, but it's down the ground. So I'm going to pull this over here, this arm over here. Now this is my marker. Um, so a couple things to start with, um, and I'll talk more as we go along, but uh, this is the first time Ken has ever planted alone. This is the first time I've ever planted alone, and first time with this planter planting alone. We have for years planted with uh, Ken and Buck, and they've always worked great. Um, a planter, especially one that has no fertilizer on, is not extremely hard to pull. So that's why I'm confident that one horse can handle this easily. Um, I have been doing in my last few videos, quite a few kind of um, showing a lot of single horse stuff, which is what I want to, to do to show that, you know, if you've only got one horse, there's still a lot of things you can do. And so that's what we've been trying to do lately. We're going to be going back to, to the team more often after this. Although we've got hay and coming along and I'm going to do a lot of single horse there too. But anyways, we'll get to planting and see how this goes. I'll have to stop and adjust a few things. And even that this is set up for two horses and how, if this is going to help work at all, I don't know. Um, we can pretty well go tire to tire tracks and we should be fine with that. I have a tape measure here so I can check the first time around, and, and I, but I'm thinking we go from tire to tire track and that should be about right. So let's get started and see how it goes. I cap us up. Oh. What do you think? Seem like it's working all right. You seeing any corn behind it that's not getting covered up? I don't. No. Looks like those shoes are in approximately where they belong. Shoes meaning is the, the steel that what opens up the, the furrow for the corn to drop into. So that looking fine. I've got to concentrate on uh, walking fairly straight so the cultivating will be a lot easier to do. Careful step.
Chévere. So I'm still experimenting here a little bit. My roller that I have, my marker, does not do a very good job of showing a line, although it is there somewhat. And had I harrowed everything crossways, it would have been clearer, but with so many straight lines as it is, so it's just one more line there to try to follow. And this is, of course, different now with one horse instead of two. So I am trying to started to go by the tire tracks and set myself over one tire width, but that really isn't even enough. So I actually have to go closer to putting can on the marker's line, which would be good if I could do that. And I'm gonna try that. It might be put it too wide, but we'll try that and see how it works out. Well, I'm progressing fairly nicely on this job. Um, not without some issues, I must say. My rows are not very straight. They are not spaced as nicely as I would like them to be. Ken is doing great, but he's not like Buck. Buck used to just walk the line and Ken does not have that ability yet. Unfortunately, because I plant so little corn, I really don't get enough practice, nor does the horse, in learning how to do it and do a good job. My rows are not very good. It's not that they're terribly crooked, except for where I try to straighten them up, but the spacing is not as good as I'd like. Okay, so here we are finishing up our planting job and I'm not sure what I did wrong, but either the field is a little bit wider at one end than the other end, or I just did a poor job of planting, which I know I did, but uh, we are going to have a piece in the center where we're going to need more corn, but the rows aren't going to go the full length of the field. As you can see right at this point here, I'll have to stop because I can't go any farther than right here. So I'm gonna draw a line right there so that I know where to stop. And so we'll have some short rows here and I'll just, when I cultivate, I'll just have to make, make it work. I've picked up my marker arm because it messes me all up if we have a bunch of marks here in the center. And we'll go up and come back to this point and then we'll be done. Um, I actually changed this. By doing that, it brought the point where Ken has to walk directly in the center of this small marker, which seems to be working a lot better. I'm kicking myself now for not doing it sooner. As you can see, Ken is directly on that mark, 
which is perfect. That's what I want. And I, it's, it's a little bit easier to force them to stay on that mark. Although from the seat, you can't see that mark very well. So that's a little bit of an issue. With a team, it's uh, more visible than it is with a single horse. But Cam is doing great planting our corn. And I am going to go up and make these two more passes. And then I will be done. I apologize for not having more footage on me planting corn, but Brenda had company, so she's not here to help. And I have just had to just concentrate on what I was doing. And it, I made enough of a mess as it is. And when you've got a lot of people watching, you kind of want to make a good looking job, which I did not, but oh well, that's the way it is sometimes um, to do these videos. I really have to put myself and my work out there and uh, there's just gonna be times where I'm going to not do so well. And this might be one of them, but you never know. Sometimes you think you do a nice job and then down the road you find that it wasn't quite as bad as you thought. And uh, we're hoping that's the case here, um, but it might be worse than I thought too. But um, unfortunately with corn, you're seeing it all throughout the course of the summer. So you're seeing what you did or right or wrong. Anyways, let's continue on and get this job done. I'm going to attempt to do a little bit of driving one-handed just so you guys can see a little bit more of what's going on. I kept up. Kept up. So you are actually looking careful, looking at what I'm looking at, and you, as you can see, you cannot see that mark ahead of us very well at all. But since I've changed this around, so he has to walk directly on that mark, he's doing better following the mark, of course. Kept up. Earlier while I was planting, I was actually trying to keep him about six inches from the mark, which only confused him all the more. But now, since he has to walk directly on the mark, he's getting better at it fairly fast. Careful, careful. Oh, as you can see, there's some of our cows chewing down on the grass and I can see the horses farther back there. But maybe we'll give you a close up of them a little later in the video too. Lady still has not had her foal. Cheek, cheek. Cheek, 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 careful, careful, careful. Oh, careful, about, calf step. Oh. So in this spot right here, I know it's going to make cultivating a little bit difficult, but uh, um, it seems like both ends of this field we've kind of tapered in so that there's not enough room to get the full um, corn planter down through to the end. It's better on this side than the other side, but uh, oh well, it is what it is. Cast out.
Chile. Chile. Catholic. Even this stretch that I'm going right now, I'm afraid there's going to be spots where when I'm cultivating, there's going to be corn that's going to be knocked down because there's really not quite enough to get full width rows down through this stretch. Feel a bit. Deep. But actually right here it's not bad at all. It should be fine. There's times where I will actually disconnect one of the hoppers and go down through with just one row to finish up a field. But I'm not going to bother today. Now we're just looking for the mark that I made in the dirt to so know when to stop and pick the planter up. And that will make us being all done. I can see it down there right now. And so a little bit more and then I'll pick it up and we'll be done. Fortunately, the corn I'm using is, is older corn, last year's corn. So if I overseed it, If I overseed it, I really don't care because as the corn gets old, the germination of it is poor, so it'd be good, good to get rid of as much of it, of it as I can, even if I end up cultivating a lot of it under. So we are done with our corn planting for 2022. 23, 23, oh my goodness, I must have lost a year there somewhere. 2023, and that is great. We'll get out here and be cultivating in the near future as the corn comes up. And uh, yeah, let's go on to something else. Yeah. All done, Ken. Yeah. Let's head to the barn. So let's see how close we can get up to where we want to put this corn planter. Careful, stop. Careful. Careful, careful, careful. Careful. Ha, 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 yippa, ha, ha, oh, oh, it's a real pain in the neck getting this corn plant in and out of this spot that we have it. Since we just use the corn plant once a year, of course, um, we have to stuff it way in the back of this little shed, and then our Nice two-seater sleigh goes in next so that we can use that in the wintertime. But it doesn't give us a lot of room in here to get maneuvered around. Of course, we push it actually in by hand, but uh, I don't know if I want to get fancy or not. Probably not. I think I'm just going to spin around and I'll get some help and we can push it in by hand. These little corn planters will turn quite sharp, so I should be able to spin around. Cast up. Cast up. Ha. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh. Good boy. So, just got to unhitch here and empty the corn out of my hoppers. As you can see, I use some of the other corn to finish up and then we'll push get this pushed in take the sled back into the shed and we'll be done okay so we have one last thing we got to do tonight if you recall from a quite a few video, videos ago now we were having some troubles with our horses and a bit of a cold that they were having and uh, we treated um, we treated Ken and Earl, I guess, but uh, Lady didn't have any problems and uh, neither did the rest of them. So, but anyways, since we brought 
lady out into this pasture with the colts, all of a sudden she started getting a snotty nose and cold, I mean, a little bit of coughing. Oh, Brenda, you're gonna have to hold her while I get some of this stuff. Lady. And so we, uh, Petra, our neighbor and our vet, said we really ought to, since she's about have, ready to have a foal, we really ought to treat her. So we're treating her with, what are we treating with, Brenda? Sulfa and trimethoprim. It's a combo drug. I used to call it Bactrim when I was working, but they don't call it that for horses, I guess. So what we do is we just put 25 tablets in a cup and put hot, 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 hot water with it, and it dissolves immediately. And then I put uh, three tablespoons of applesauce in it and we suck it up with a syringe and she doesn't mind it at all. Which is great. This morning we were out here and Duke and Earl came over and they were a real nuisance. Yeah, I literally let Duke hold the cup and he was holding it in his mouth. Come here, come here. Get up. This is kind of a sloppy job. There we go. A little bit more here. Everybody wonders when oh. you're going to have your colt. So just, get, just a little done. bit more. And we are done. Do you wish I had some too, fella? Okay. So yeah, we could take another quick peek at her udder oh, yeah. and I can tell already there's nothing there still. I'm Um, she obviously doesn't want anything to do with this right now, but it's amazing how well she takes her medicine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, I'm so glad for that. Yeah. Anyways, we'll keep you updated on Lady as time progresses. Already she's passed even most everybody's uh, guesstimate of when she's going to have her full. There are some myself June included. Guess, June guesses in there. Yeah, and so here it is the 20, what's the date today? 3rd. 23rd, so we'll see what happens. So you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time. I finally shed it out most of the way. Mm -hmm. We have plenty to eat here. Yeah, this was a hay field a couple years ago. Last, uh, last year we put it into a pasture. We really should have put the animals out here a lot sooner because the grass is really getting kind of tall. But uh, now the cows are can we, be in here yeah. and help chew it down. We still have, I think, uh, five or six more cows on the other side of the barn, but most of them are here. Okay. You have a great night. See you later.